Hello and a warm welcome back to Mr M for Chem. Let's have a look at this 24 out of 24 IA, which is on the teacher support material for IB chemistry. It's one of my least liked topics, which is electrolysis, due to the amount of uh, control that you need to do to manage the precipitate and the flocculation which you get inevitably as the electrolysis proceeds. Um, we start off well, there's a good focused research question. I can see the IV, the DV. I'm wondering about the Q equals IT, should that be invoked here? There are a few occasions in this IA where copying is done clearly, control C, control V, into the body of the work without any reference. Um, water molecules invoking H plus OH minus, I might expect to see a KW expression here, just to add some mathematical rigor to the, to the discussion. Uh, design is still a quarter, is a quarter of the uh, marks for the new IA. I expect to see a greater extension than this. At the cathode, we do have two competing reactions, which are well discussed there. We now have another uh, set of reduction potentials uh, straight from the uh, data booklet as was, and um, a reasonable discussion about ones with lower E0 values being stronger reducing agents. It's all textbook stuff. There's nothing much to extend it beyond the uh, core syllabus, which we know, which doesn't suggest a great deal of uh, interest in what the student is doing. Uh, for the first time, we're noticing this new word, which is overpotential. I've come across this before, so I know what it is, but you can't assume that if a idea is not on the syllabus, a concept is not on the syllabus, that your moderator is going to know about it. I would expect a greater explanation of what overpotential is for the student to be hitting the top bands on the background information. Again, Q equals IT seems to be evoked or uh, invoked and uh, the, the, the equation's actually uh, missing from the, the discussion. We have the second control C, control V equation without a reference here, um, but the student has put in the uh, quantities, what they mean, but has not put in any units. So current misses amps, time misses seconds, mass misses grams, etc. Um, I considered the experimental results would be similar to the theoretical results. That's a bit of a vague statement to make without any um, corroborative or uh, data to augment that uh, posture that the student is, is, is uh, ascertaining. A thing that I think is missing from this is, is temperature. Temperature is discussed later, we'll see that. However, when you do an electrolysis, it gets hot, right? We all know that it gets hot because the current's going through the, the solution. There is some resistance there, which I suspect is uh, most of the reason. And the temperature is going to increase. So how do you control temperature if the temperature is going to increase? And as you increase the current, I would expect the temperature to get, get higher. Um, I like the fact that the student has conducted a trial. That's great. It's always lovely to see that a student has conducted a trial. It's even better if the student puts in the results of that trial in a table to prove, or at least go a long way to proving, that they've actually done the thing. A um, bit of a vague statement here, a less resisted, resistive, can hardly say it, current path. I'm not sure what that means. That could be um, in need of further explanation. Maybe it's me and my lack of knowledge of the physics of this. The student then goes on to talk about a galvanostat, a variable resistor, I'm familiar with these. Um, but it doesn't say whether it was measured or not. So there's a lot of um, suggesting that they're going to keep it constant by manually increasing the resistance every time the current exceeds. But where is the table? Where, is, where are the results to prove that, that this was done? The current 10 seconds, how was that decided? Where was the background? Where was the trial? Did the try 20? Did the try five? Was 10 the best? Copper deposits were visible, good as the current was adjusted. The visible wear, was it on the nail? Was it in suspension? Was it dropping to the bottom of the beaker? Precision is another um, issue that I have with this IA. So we've got 10 to the minus five on current, 0 0.00619 amps. How do we get to 10 to the minus five? Can a school laboratory reach one in 10,000 on precision? Dependent is the mass of copper. Now, this is why I don't really like electrolysis ones, because some copper will deposit, be deposited on the iron nail. Most will fall off as fine particles, sink to the bottom, or be flocculating in suspension 
in the beaker itself? How do you control for that? Do you just say, I expect it to happen, so I'm going to ignore it, it's a systematic error? Or do you try and capture it? And to the student's credit, they're actually trying to capture it in this IA. Temperature, uh, a quote from a textbook, increased temperature, a bit of collision theory, more copper deposited, okay. But how is it measured? Um, did the student put a thermometer in by the electrode or just in the solution or just change the thermostat on an air conditioning unit? Maybe I'm showing off my location here. There is a diagram later on in the internal assessments. Um, it's always great to see a photograph, a, th a thumbnail, thumbnail, just a little image of your experimental setup. That's always great to see in your internal assessments. A factor introduced into this IA is we have a copper uh, electrode and an iron electrode. But is it pure iron? Is it galvanized? Has it got zinc in it? Has it got carbon in it? Has it got any other metals alloyed with it? Is it pure? I'm not sure. We had an earlier mention of other potential. Now we have another one, void fraction. Again, it might just be me. I'm not entirely sure what a void fraction is. Maybe that could be uh, explained a little bit more. Faraday's law, the mass is proportional to the current and the time. So where is Q equals IT? What is the concentration? You can't just say concentration without stating what it actually is. It does appear a bit later, and I have a question about that as well. The trial that the student said they'd done, I don't see any evidence of it actually having been done within the body of the internal assessment to corroborate that it was undertaken that different durations were tested, that different currents were tested, that different uh, masses were measured to check they actually had a range within their dependent variable. The materials list, okay, is, is there. And we do have the parameters. We have some uncertainties present and some uncertainties are not. I believe the uncertainties refer to the things that are used in a calculation, which is fine. That's what we always do. And we have a three decimal place pipette. Clearly, they have greater precision than the ones that I have at my school. Some of the uncertainties I would challenge. How is the thermometer 0 0.05? So it's 0 0.5. Different one. Don't know. Um, and it would also be good to see always, whenever you're doing a dilution, a calculation of how you came up with the final values rather than just saying I want to use x grams in x cm cubed of H2M. This looks quite creative, this is quite inventive. Um, quick kudos to the student. They seem to have one, two, three, four variable resistors in series and ammeter. Uh, you can see the iron nail, which is the cathode where reduction takes place, and anode is the copper foil, which we assume is going to keep the equilibrium copper 2 plus in solution and complete the circuit. So that's good to see what the student did. Again, they've put 30 millimeters between the electrodes. I've seen IAs looking at the effect of the difference between the distance uh, between the electrodes, changing the distance. That's quite a good IA to do. But how did they arrive at 30 millimeters? Again, the reflection seems to be absent from this internal assessment. The procedure, okay, it takes a bit of reading. I always uh, steer my students to do bullet points because chemists are reading it and they do have a low boredom threshold, it must be said. And it's nice to say step one, I set up the apparatus, step two, I diluted the solution. These were the masses that I used, the volume that I used, the uncertainties that I used, etc. I used the minimum quantities possible to test the research question. It's a great sentence to put into there because you're showing your ethical and environmental awareness as well. Moving on, the risk assessment, I would say is perhaps one of the weakest parts of this IA. There's no mention of judicious quantities, minimum quantities to test the research question. Um, could they have done it on a micro scale? Could they have used a different electrolyte of less uh, harmful nature to test the research question? Why was copper sulfate necessary? Why was iron chosen? Again, an absence of reflection here. There is mention of recycling 
for use at lower levels. Maybe I'm being a bit mean on the uh, ethical environmental, but I have seen better treatments in different IAs. It'd be great to see if the student was, again, another electrolysis point. Whenever you're electrolyzing, there's always some oxide, hydroxide, um, impurities in the iron nail will precipitate out insoluble hydroxides. The student appears to not consider this during the IA. Qualitative is nice. Uh, it grew to be flakier, I quite like that. Bubbles on the nail, that's good. At around 400 seconds or above, the blue intensity remained the same. That's nice, and we have some experimental data to back it up. Whenever you are asserting something, always put in the data to back up what you are asserting. The student has given an exemplar calculation here for the average current, okay? They didn't give the uh, calculation for how they worked out the concentration of the copper sulfates. We now come on to one big point, which are uh, I see as problems with the IA. And whenever I see a table of results, I can see the target's current up there is uh, 0 0.1, etc., down to 0 0.5. Where is the uncertainty on that? We have one, two, three, four, five decimal places in the uncertainty on the average current, but only three decimal places in the data. So there are two more in the uncertainty. So it's 006, 006. That would seem much more uh, a valid thing to assert in this IA. And I would actually mark down for that. Shout at me in the comments if you disagree. We now have precision to, I think that is around 12 decimal places. To the credit, student's credit, they have re reduced it to one, two, three, four, five decimal places. Mm. I'm looking at realistic, realistically, can a school laboratory achieve those levels of precision? Missing uncertainties in the numbers at the bottom. Wherever I see a number, I always guide my students to do an uncertainty associated with it. In the next table, we now have more missing uncertainty and inconsistent decimal places. I would suggest that the number protocols in this internal assessment are worthy of a down mark. Remember, this is on the support material as a 24 out of 24. So I may be nitpicking, and it is a very, very good IA, but for a 24 out of 24, I would expect something pretty close to perfection because that's what 24 out of 24 is. And I've seen IAs much closer to 24 than this one. I'll give you the mark at the end, but as we're going through, perhaps have a look at what you think. The uncertainty at 0 0.104 amps is 22%. That is enormous, almost a quarter of the data we're plus or minus. Massive, massive. Precision continues to be an issue on the next table, 22% uh, uncertainty on the mass of the copper and even by the student's own admission i think it actually gets bigger as they go through because things flocculate they precipitate they fall off they go to the bottom you might not the most such a fine particle size you're not going to get them in the filter paper that we have in a school lab beautiful graph right beautiful graph well is it hmm. the error bars kind of eclipse each other such that one to the ones at 0 0.3, 0 0.4, there is no trend discernible between them because the error bars are so big. The student has done maximum minimum gradients. Again, you don't have to do those, but they are a good way to treat it. And missing uncertainties from the table underneath yet again. Now don't forget, conclusion evaluation is now 50%, 50% for the new internal assessment. And this student has done what I'd consider kind of a scant treatment of the data that they've got. There is some honest discussion, which is great. They're talking about the thing I just talked about, about the error bars almost being in line. So it's not really uh, a trend, which is here. There's lots of chat, uh, talk, narrative about impossible to differentiate between several data points. Uh, there are errors in the accuracy, worse to precision, but okay. Um, again, small error, but if this is 24, I don't expect small errors. R squared value is high, but in the context of those overlapping error bars, 
what's the meaning of that? The student does talk about the different errors, systematic and random errors, does talk about the qualitative nature, um, has invoked a study using uranium, which I found very interesting. I thought that was great. And it's great to have little interesting uh, tidbits, anecdotes within your internal assessment. Your moderator is going to be marking over 100 IAs, and it's nice to find something unusual to read that would cheer us up. So thank you for that. They could have invoked E0 into that discussion on the production of hydrogen, and then they've talked about a more, more of the same, more robust method, uh, better quality. And that's it, one and a half pages for 50% of the marks on a 3,000 word assessment. I, for one, don't consider that 24 out of 24. I would love to know what you think. In the next section of the video, I will go through the rubric and assign some marks as I see it. Research design, where do we put this? Is it stated? Yes. Does it have context? Yes. Does the method test the research question? Yes. Are all methodological considerations done? Almost. I'll give that a five. On the next one, if we're looking at the analysis, analysis was very good. That was a five. The conclusion was brief, very brief indeed. I'll give that a four, so that's 14. An evaluation, probably a three. I give that a 17 out of 24. It's on TSM as 24. Comments, please. Thank you.